Speeds, Quetzalcoatl to the Aztecs, Kuko Khan to the Mayans, Coco Pele to the Pueblo tribes. Quetzalcoatl, uh, his name means um, the plumed serpent. It is the dawning of the fifth sun that Quetzalcoatl descend into the world of the dead to bring people back from the bones said to be made like seeds. Quetzalcoatl um, grew in popularity among both gods and humans until he boarded a ship and sailed away. That's how the story went. Quetzalcoatl promised to return on an exact date and year. That was February 1519. Quetzalcoatl left to the east on a boat of, of uh, serpents. It was common in smaller areas for merchants and, wealth, and the wealthy to save money for years to hold the huge banquets in honor of Quetzalcoatl. The meat of the banquets was from slaves that was sacrificed in honor of Quetzalcoatl. But the, where do Quetzalcoatl fit in in that? It's kind of obvious with the Phoenicians, with the um, sacrificing to Moloch of women and children and the priest of Baal, which is what the origin of the word cannibal is from. Quetzalcoatl is a solar deity. He, he was also destroyed all but his heart. This heart is where he was regenerated from. That sounds familiar, right? He was later resurrected by his heart. The heart was saved by Minerva while Bacchus was being torn apart. The, uh, In many sculptures of Mithra, Mithra is shown being born from a rock, sacrificing a bull and eating with the sun. This links Mithra with the sun worship and also with um, a sacred rising in honor of the sun and uh, you know sacrifices and eating the sacrifice also this is also the hallmarks of worship of Quetzalcoatl Quetzalcoatl much like Dionysus was the god of rain and vegetation both Nimrod and Quetzalcoatl uh, meet therein after looking into a mirror um, while Bacchus was uh, admiring himself in a mirror, the Titans all of a sudden jumped on him and tore him apart. The ringleader, a minor god called Tezcatlipoca, whose name means the smoking mirror, rounded them up and proposed. Then he took the Tezcatlipoca and offered him a gift. So they went to the palace of the gods and gave him the gift wrapped in cotton. Tezcatlipoca unwrapped the gift, wondering, what is it? It was a mirror. The god saw himself reflected in the buried mirror and saw that he had a face. Being a god, he believed he had no face. Now he realized that he had a human face and that perhaps for this reason he also had a human destiny. The demons shrieked gleefully and abandoned Quetzalcoatl, who that night drank and committed incest with his sister. The next day, he fled to the east on a raft of serpents promising to return one day to see if men had taken care of the earth. Quetzalcoatl ruled large portions of Central America and Mexico until his battle with Our Lady of Guadalupe. The nature of Mexico was conquered by the Spanish. The people did not convert to Christianity so fast. They clung to their sacred traditions until 1531, the Virgin Mary appeared to Juan Diego. She asked Diego to go to the bishop and ask for a church to be built in her honor. The bishop asked uh, for proof. So Mary uh, filled Diego's rough overcoat with roses. This was enough proof. The church was built and over 9 million Aztecs were converted to the Catholic faith as a result. That's how the story goes. So we have to look for proof in all that we read. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is how Quetzalcoatl was called Our Lady as one of his titles. And that's also supposed to be the name of the one that defeated him in uh, 1531. So we got to remember that 
So was that a real conquest and real conversion, or was it just somebody changing their mask, changing their faith? Thousands of years passed, and I am there. Your fathers knew me, and your fathers' fathers. I am Apollo. 